Hey guys, how's it going? Tristan, Optrix, how is the day so far? I was just watching uh, Death for a little bit before I started streaming, making sure that he's doing okay. It looks good so far though. Just had to grab my book. Almost forgot. Hey mama, how's it going? <laughs> nice tryst. You didn't do nothing at work. Those are always good days. You need those every now and then. Oh no, Opterix. How come? Yeah, the guys got home early today as well at lunchtime and they're gonna finish building the garden boxes today, hopefully. He is mama, yeah, he is. So hopefully you guys can pull up two different browsers there and watch us both at the same time. That'd be fun. Okay, Doggo's being a butthead. As always. Okie dokes. You teach in the day tomorrow and then you have a two hour meeting after school and then the award ceremony, holy. That's a busy one, Opterix. The life of a teacher. Do I miss working an eight to five job? Sometimes, just for like, I guess the set schedule aspect of it. But at the same time, like I never really had a set schedule because some days I'd have to go in early, some days I'd have to stay late. So that's kind of how they get you when you're on salary being a chef is You'll never actually just work the 40 hours a week. You'll probably work close to like 50 or 60. So I don't love that part. But I guess I miss like the rush of the job as well. It's just like everything has to be done so fast all the time. I should probably shut my Discord notification sounds off. No rest for the weary. Never is Opterix. There never is. So Wellness Wednesday, we are going to stuff pork tenderloin with blueberry goat cheese. I know you were kind of weird about that Opterix, but I think it's gonna be really good. And then we're gonna serve it with a white wine, thyme, and blueberry pan sauce later on. So we're gonna deglaze the pan with the wine after the pork is roasted. And then the side dishes today, we're gonna make potato pave. I don't know if anyone knows what that is even. And then honey garlic glazed carrots and kale. So the potato pave is the most involved process today. The original recipe says it takes about four hours, or sorry, it takes about eight hours to make it properly. I'm gonna see if we can do it in four today though. So what potato pave is, is very thinly sliced potatoes, like about 1 16th of an inch. And then they get layered into a baking pan. So I'm gonna use this one. So you want something a little bit taller so you can build up the height with the pave. So you slice the potatoes, put them into cream so that they don't start to turn brown. Season them with salt and pepper, start layering them in here. And then this gets baked until it's really nice and tender. It says almost two hours to bake it very low heat, but I think it should be done within like an hour and a half. That seemed a little excessive. And then it gets cooled and then we slice it into like little portions. So maybe I'll get like five or six portions out of this. And then after it's cooled and sliced, you'll have this like little brick of sliced potato that's baked. Then you fry it off in a pan and crisp up the outside. It's amazing. And plus you can't really go wrong with a recipe from Thomas Keller. Opterix, can I get wild blueberries where I am? I'm not sure about blueberries. I'm sure there is, like there's a blueberry kind of patch or a farm on the way to where I work at my farm. So there is that, but there's mostly just blackberries like everywhere here. They take over everything. So blackberries galore. 
Blueberries, not so much. High helicopter. Eaten lamb and potatoes with garlic and coriander naan bread. That sounds so good. <laughs> Elvin. Insomnia with dark Elvin. I'm doing good. I am doing well. So I see that the jet lag is being mean to you. Get a green screen on mine, yeah. I mean, he posted a link yesterday so we could have both streams side by side. I don't know, maybe go and ask him, Mama, and see if he'll give it to you again. And that way, no one will lose views. I know, Thomas Keller, my hero. We're doing his potato pave recipe. Hey, Yachts, how are ya? Okay, so the pork tenderloin, not very difficult to prepare. It'll probably take about an hour total to prep and cook both pieces. We're going to be doing two different pork tenderloins. And then the carrot and the kale will take about 20 minutes to prep. We're going to blanch it as well beforehand. I know you guys are familiar with that now, but we'll go through the whole process again. I think this is the third time that I've blanched on stream. A really, really great way to cook vegetables and keep them nice and fresh, especially if you're going to just like simply season them or glaze them with some butter afterwards. Really, really nice. And then after they're blanched, they'll probably take about eight minutes in the pan with the glaze, which we're going to make from scratch. Some butter, some honey, some garlic. Cannot go wrong with that. What, Elvin? Luxurious bath at 3 a.m. that has a TV. Don't fall asleep in there. <laughs> Pave is a term for the way diamonds are set. Yes, it's true, Trist. <laughs> I never blanch on stream. Hey, Steampunk. What is good? So ingredients for our Pave. I don't know if you guys popped in on Discord yet and saw all these recipes, but they are all posted. So for the pave, you'll need about three pounds of russet potatoes, which I got some here, grown in BC. Yay for that. How bad is that like drilling noise for you guys? Like, can you hear it really clear? And is it kind of cutting out my, <laughs> I was just going to say, someone's going to say something. That's them screwing the boards together outside, and I have all of the doors closed. Is it really disruptive to when I talk, or is it okay? Pave Maria. Pave Maria. <laughs> Eight PM to one AM. Elvin, you gotta like just stay up for one full day and then pass out the next day and then you'll probably catch up on your sleep. Thanks, MIA. It's okay. Okay, we will carry on then. So three pounds of potatoes, one cup of cream, and that's what the potatoes after they're sliced, they get dunked in the cream. And that keeps them from oxidizing. And then we're gonna season the cream with salt and pepper. And then our pan that we're baking in, it needs to be lined with parchment paper so that the edges are sticking out. Why don't we just do this together right now? So you want the sides to stick out of the pan so that you have something to grab onto. Let's do that quick. So that when this is cooled off, you can just easily take the potato out of the pan so you can slice it after. So that's what we need for that. And then that gets buttered. Not skimping on the butter. I mean, Thomas Keller would never do that for us anyways. <laughs> And then when we go to fry it up, obviously we need just a little bit of canola oil or vegetable oil. 
If you want, you can put in a couple sprigs of thyme and some garlic cloves into the pan as well while we fry it up. And then that's it. So pretty simple, not a ton of ingredients for that. Oh, my handwriting, yeah, my crazy handwriting. It looks really neat, but like the way I write is very weird, I think, just because I am left-handed, I don't know. I got my own style, that's for sure. Jim Jim, you're banning me already. I haven't even started. Okay, pork tenderloin. So we need two pork tenderloins. Obviously you could half this recipe if you don't wanna make two at a time. And then about one and a half cups of blueberry goat's cheese. So let me pull that out and show you how this looks. And it is very, very good. Like I've made little toasts before with this on top and some honey, amazing. And thank you Costco for this. So all the blueberries on the outside and then the goat cheese is still plain on the inside, I believe. <laughs> I love how we're talking about teeth right now. Gotta get those crest white strips, guys. And then for our pan sauce after we are done cooking the pork, we'll do a cup of white wine. I don't think it matters too much on the vintage there. And obviously you use a crappier wine if you find that it's not as drinkable. Obviously you can cook with it instead. A couple sprigs of thyme, about a quarter cup of blueberries. I'm gonna use frozen ones. And then half a lemon juice at the end and then we'll mount the sauce technical term here which just means you're gonna slowly add in nubs of cold butter and then that's gonna make the sauce really nice and silky and smooth and it shouldn't separate if we do it right jim jim yeah drilling sounds in the background it's the guys building the garden boxes in the backyard Elvin, on the downside, can only hang for a bit. On the plus side, it's almost breakfast. Amazing. Has the breakfast been good? Okay, on to our honey, garlic, glazed carrots, and kale. So about eight cups of carrots for eight servings. About a cup per serving is what I generally give people. And then four cups of kale. I think that's how much I have. I got a nice big bunch from the farm yesterday. And for the glaze, three tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of honey, two cloves of garlic, which are gonna be minced in. And then to finish off everything, two tablespoons of dill chopped. I thought those flavors would go really, really good together with the pork. The breakfast is insane, I bet. Can you take some photos and post them? I need to see what this is all about. Okay, order of prep. So we're gonna make the potato pave first and bake it. And that way we'll have quite a bit of time while it's baking to do our other things, like stuff our pork tenderloin and season it and get it ready for roasting. Prep the carrots and kale and then blanch them. Cool the pave off. Hopefully by that time it will be done. I'm guessing it will take about 40-ish minutes to cool the pave off. I'm gonna put it into the freezer. The blast chiller, as Food Network likes to call it. And then while that's chilling, we will go over our duck confit for tomorrow since I wasn't able to do the process on stream yet. And maybe do some fun facts after that. Prep the sauce ingredients, get the glaze ready for the veg. Then we should be able to cut our pave. So we need to cool it off enough so that when we cut it, it doesn't just fall apart. That's the key here. So that's the longest thing is that typically they want it to cool for six hours. I'm like, that's insane. Who has time for that? And then we'll preheat our oven to 500 Fahrenheit for the pork, roast it for about 15 minutes until it's 140 Fahrenheit. 
So right around medium inside. Then we'll heat our cast iron with oil for the pave, sear it off on all the sides, get it nice and crisp. Heat our honey garlic glaze and toss the veg in the pan. While we let the pork rest, we're gonna make the pan sauce and that's it. Pretty simple. Oh man, Elvin, they have the chilies you can never find. That's an expensive crest whitening kit. I'm sure it works well though. You won't be able to post any photos till you get back. Okay, you can save them all up for us and then you'll just spam us with everything. The newest and best whitening. I just saw that I had an extra pack of like the intensive white strips. So I should probably start using those up. It's like the two pack that you can get at Costco. Peking duck at 1942 in Beijing. Oh my God. <laughs> Tris, you guys are, I love when you guys fight. Makes my day. Okay, let's get started so that this pave does not get the best of us. So we need to pour a cup of cream into a bowl and season it with salt and pepper. Then we will peel the potatoes, cut a thin lengthwise slice off of one side. So we're going to square it up just so it fits in the pan really nicely. And then we're gonna start to slice it thin. So I have a mandolin here. This is Sammy's. Sammy's crazy mandolin. So it's, it's a bit bigger than the green one that I used to use. Hey, oh Matt, how are you? How has the week been? Let me just set this up right now. Ta -da. So like a very, very thin slice. I'm good, man. Thanks for asking. Can't believe it's hump day already. Where are the tweezers? Yeah, just let me get them from the bathroom. I actually don't have a pair of like chef tweezers. And I'm proud of that. Like, I've never been a person like that. Hey, Mies. How are you? Posh got bit by a bee or something. That's why her face is drooping. And that's why she's drooling. Poshy. Why? It doesn't look swollen. I know, but, she, yeah, but she's drooling off that one side. <laughs> oh, no. Preparing for the weekend. Nice. Got any crazy plans? Ah, she got bit by a bee. She's drooling all day. <laughs> oh man. You're traveling this weekend? Where to? We'll give this cream a shake. So just enough cream to cover up the potato slices. So you were probably good there. Maybe a little bit more. Never be shy with the cream. And the way we go to peeling. Sister-in-law's B-Day. You're having a barbecue. These are not the best looking potatoes. Do I say that every time?
Okay, I was gonna ask Omat if the barbecue was in the same spot where you live, but it's obviously not. Well, that's fun though. You went on a date today, nice. Congrats, dude. Was it lovely? No problem, Tris. Thanks for being here, man. Now you get to mod it up. <laughs> this dog. She's got the drools today. I've never seen her drool before in like all of these years. She was nice. Ah, word. Oh, that's amazing. I'm pumped. I need some more deets, but I'm not gonna ask you on stream. Is Anya married? <laughs> Question of the year. Posh, are you serious? So we gotta go do this pretty quick because the potatoes are gonna start to turn brown. You can do them with not just root vegetables. Or sorry, not just with potatoes. Like you can do them with any root vegetable. I've done them with beets before. I know, not really uh, surprising there. Hey guys. What hasn't she done with beets? Hey, Anya. What's going on? We're talking dirt. Hurry, everyone hush. Hush, hush. I knew you were gonna say that, Omat. Leave it up to you. Keep me on my toes. Can't get away with nothing. Okay, so now, oh, we can't do this yet. So we gotta square up the potato first. So just cut the ends off there. There, square it up the best as you can. And like that, and then I'll leave the other side so that we should get something rectangular. Don't worry, I'm not gonna throw these ends out. I'll use them up for something. Kinky with beets. You heard it here first. Okay. 
Jim is single and ready to not mingle. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be a cute couple. Give you guys top tips. I don't know, start cooking. Cook for the ladies. Okay, now, slicing. Let's see our first one. Whoo! She be thin. Maybe I'll go a little bit bigger. A little bit thicker. Step one, don't hang out on Twitch. Always hang out on Twitch. Grow up on you. I want to hear none of that. Oh man, Opteryx, the worst. Okay, I don't know if there's a happy medium. It's too thick. Watch those digits. Mandolins can be scary. So that just gets put into the cream. And that way they won't oxidize. Yeah, new guillotine. It's actually Sammy's. Works pretty good with this stuff. And it has a good little safety thing as well. So that just gets stabbed in. Start cucking. Don't do it. Do not. Wilden. Wilden. Yeah, just extra protein if you somehow slice your finger off. They are so thin that you can see through it. That's what you want. I got you, Opteryx. It's okay, guys. Don't worry about my mandolin skills. The amount of times I've used this thing. I used to rip through prep in the mornings in the kitchen. This ain't my first mandolin. What have I been up to on you? I don't know, man. Life's just flying by. I can't keep track of everything. Still chilling at the farm and stuff. Trying to get the house set up. Still deciding how I want everything to be in here. Obviously, we need money for that. So we're going to take it slow. And the weather's been beautiful, so I've been trying to spend as much time outside as possible. You got in trouble, Elvin. Is your girlfriend there with you? These are some juicy potatoes. Holy. Getting those snacks. Do I prefer a finger picking style or bowing? What does that mean? I don't even know what that means. Sushi yachts. I will take a spicy tuna roll. I 
and maybe some avocado mango roll. Time <laughs> for Sammy to get a second or third job. Yeah, I'm sure he would agree to that. <laughs> I'm cut off in August anyways. So we'll see at that point if I need to get another part-time job or not. This is what we're looking at so far. So everything is still nice and light colored. It's not turned brown. Oh, I get it, Octorix. I get it. Your teacher wit got me there. Yahtzee, there's no way that I would consider that stream sniping. <laughs> I don't stream, I just eat. Oh, she's trying to sleep, Elvin. Hilarious. I can just imagine that. I'm sure I would do the same if Sam did it. Fun Ireland facts, I love it. Anya, can you confirm please? Get your life together. Go eat some sushi. Oh, don't worry. I love the puns as well. So now we're going to put this back to zero and then just rinse it off. And get rid of this little mess that we got going on. And then I think before we go any further, we should start the oven. And all of the recipes that I looked at for Thomas Keller's, they didn't put a temperature for the pave. So I'm a little confused by that. I think I'll just do 350 Fahrenheit. <laughs> you confirm that fun facts? Thank you, Anya. Okay, 3.30. Let's line our pan first. So I'm going to just cut this part here where it's gonna like stick out. And that way we won't get like any wrinkles inside. At least I think so. Let's see how accurate this was. <laughs> Messiah. The potato slip. Never a good thing. Hold this over. That way it's nice and neat. Very nice. You guys have starch store. Yeah, how starchy are your potatoes? Okay, and I do need the salt and pepper. Salt and pepper is Good old Borat. Can you go wrong with that? I don't think so. Elvin, I saw that while I was in Thailand as well and I couldn't do it. I could not bring myself to eat like any insect that was massive and fried like that. Hey Steve, how's it going? So now I think the potatoes will go best this way and see, oh, maybe we'll do side by side.
We'll do it this way and kind of overlap them. And then it said every two layers you should season, but I think I'll do like every three because these are pretty thin. And we are making the pave. Yeah, very uncomfortable slash funny movie. grab a paper towel so I don't have to keep washing my hands off every time I go to season this stuff. It's sunny and you're happy, Steve. That's where I'm at too. Actually, it doesn't know what it wants to do today but I'm okay with that, as long as it's not raining. Is it every two seasons I should layer? <laughs> and the important thing here as well is after this is baked, you actually have to weigh down the top so it kind of presses all of the layers really close together. Yes, Yachts, You're getting that spicy tuna roll. Now I want sushi. You made a sush. Yoko, Zuna, and dragon roll. A steak roll? Never seen that. Kale with Kate. Nice. Is it curly kind on your knees or is it like the more flat, darker kind? And what are you going to do with it? Use a brick to weigh it down. I know it would be perfect, hey? having a celery week just living off celery Yahtzee I've had chocolate covered cricket it was okay. The texture was too weird. It was like pasty. Wasn't my thing. Curly kale, nice. That sounds so good, man. I'm glad to hear you're still cooking up a storm. Elvin, bacon roll is where it's at. Oh, Matt, tuna pasta salad with celery. I was just thinking of like tuna casserole this week. Such a good old school classic. Betty used to make it a lot. 
when we were little. Switching it up, we're gonna go that way. It's ruined. We messed up the layering. Am I making moussaka? I am not making moussaka. I am making potato pave. I'm getting yelled at by the oven. Steve, you'd had dirt covered earthworms. What? What are you talking about? Just eating worms out of the ground? Celery increases pheromones. Yeah, no wonder the date went so well. I see your tricks, Omat. You don't even need any tips. You're good to go. Is that two or three? Two. I'm losing track. Oh, you were hoping for Musaka. Sorry, Pharaoh. I've I have not done it on stream before, but I do have a really good recipe that I'll have to make for you guys. One of these days. And thank you for the follow, Pharaoh. He was talking about his date. He's very excited. Oh man, Messiah and yet worms and dirt. Such a good little dessert. I'm just laughing at you, Omat. You and your craziness. Exactly, Messiah. Yeah, I forget where I am. Where am I, guys? Is this real life? What happened? We'll blame Thomas Keller. For this trickery. Okay, we're almost there. Tristan, you can't say bad things if you're a mod now. <laughs> you have to be good. Let everyone else be bad. No, it's okay. You know your limit, man. I won't get mad. I might just say, hey, watch it. Okay, 
we only have a couple layers left. We're pretty much there. Of course, Omat, I could never put a limit on you. That would not be fair. Who modded first? Yeah, I blocked the links for a bit because we had some crazy peeps coming in and it was getting super annoying. So I just blocked it, but send it to Anya and he'll post it. I'm not scared of your links. What's the white thing I'm making layers with? This is potatoes. Thinly sliced potatoes. I have some thicker ones here too though. So we'll just put them on top and that way they should cook in time. And that's it. We did it. The pave has been layered. Not that bad, hey? I'm gonna put some butter on top of there. And then we should be well on our way. From OMAT. Okay, let me see. I'll open it on my crap book. I'm scared, but I'll do it. I will click the link. Whoa, Sushi Day has a koi pond? Too unlimited. I'm gonna listen to that after. Is there a fish aquarium in the background? No. What the heck are you talking about? The guys are outside building garden boxes. Okay, that should be well seasoned. Time for the butt. I just had a sneeze and now it's gone. The worst thing ever. I know, no slippers. I threw them out, Steve. They got a hole in them. I'm fresh out of safety slippers. Better be careful. Don't get injured. Okay, that looks good. You can hear water sounds. Oh, I think that's the oven like staying hot. It's like clicking kind of. Okay, so next up, we're just gonna fold that back over and that way it'll kind of steam as it bakes in the oven. It's our happy little package. And then we're just gonna cover it with foil. Have I tried to make Sarma? I don't even know what that is. Enlighten me, please. You can't really see them. Like the spot that they're working, there is no window there. Otherwise I totally would, Chris. You know this. 
Curlin, thanks for the follow and welcome. You can eat koi. Oh man. Okay. Yeah, this is a solid brick of gold. I thought you would like that. So oven is ready. I'm going to set the timer for an hour and then we'll check it at that point. We should be good. Do it up, Pharaoh. Just send me a whisper and then I'll post it. We'll go middle rack as well. One hour. Started. Hey, Rook, how's the day? Okay, so we can check off our list here. Make potato pave and bake it, done. Next up, we're gonna stuff our pork tenderloin and then season it up. We probably have to give them a little trim as well. I'm just trying to think of everything that I'm gonna cook in the pans that I wanna to use today. Da, da, da. Maybe I'll do the pork in the green pan. Thanks, Aninis. I know, Chef Mike, just chilling in the corner over there because you never know. Yeah, thanks, guys. It's been going really good. Really, really good still. Busy day, Rook, but you're almost done. That's good to hear. I'm just gonna grab my boning knife. The knife for the bones. What kind of fish come out of the bay by my house that's really tasty? Well, we have salmon, like everywhere. Thanks, Farrell. Okay, I'm gonna click that. And then I'll watch it after the stream. All of the links. We're gonna get sharp. Yee. Yeah. That's all it takes, guys. Just a couple of swipes and you keep your knives nice and sharp. Has anyone had sturgeon? I don't, I don't know if I've ever eaten sturgeon, but I've had the sturgeon caviar at school. These are some big loins. Watch out world. Sveti Pitar, thanks for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Senior prank night. Oh, I remember that. Good times, Optrix. Thanks for bringing that back. So pork tenderloin. There's always this little bit of silver skin on it that has to come off. And then there's sometimes this little nubby that they leave on. I don't know why, but it doesn't cook up evenly at all. So I'm just going to cut that off. And then I'm probably going to square it off as well about there. 
That way it won't be too difficult to stuff. And then we're going to start by trying to take our silver skin off. Try and go as close to the surface as possible with your knife. That way you won't lose too much meat. And obviously the sharper the knife, the better. It's huge, hey, Epic-ish? Like this is a massive pork tenderloin. They never used to be this big. So there's a little bit more on the end here. I think we're good. So you want the meat to always look really nice and smooth as well when you're cleaning it. And the rest of this fat and stuff, I'm just gonna leave that on. So we went from something that looked weird like that to something really nice and cleaned. Okay, this side, you can kind of see there's a bunch of stuff hanging off. That's not very nice. So you definitely have to clean that up. I don't know what this butcher was doing, to be honest. And then into our silver. Of course, nubby is a technical term. Dog was outside with the guys. She's suntanning, I think. Yeah, I abandoned the pup. She's gone, guys. Oh, I'm sure she'll be back in here when I start to cut the carrots and the veg because she likes kale stems as well. She'll get her veggie fix. Let's just put it that way. Okay, that piece looks pretty good as well. I might just trim off this part. Cause it is so thin and it wouldn't cook up very nice anyways. Take that fat off, everything else looks good. So we're good to go. Good to go. that will just be put into the bag. We'll probably just fry it up quickly in the pan later. No waste ever. He was adding weight. Yeah, exactly. Yachts. Cool, Farrell. Okay, I'll for sure check it out. The link is opened up on my browser, so I'll look at it after the stream. Okay, so now you guys are gonna probably laugh at this part because I have to stab a hole in. So I'll probably go in from each side and make about like a one inch slit and that's where the cheese is gonna go. So I think this will work a little bit better with the goat cheese, just so that if we were to like open this up and make the tenderloin like flat and then roll the cheese in, I think it would all just cook out. So we're gonna do it a little bit of a different way and hopefully it works better. So try and keep your knife in the center of the tenderloin. Poke all the way in. If you can, give it a rotate like that. So we have that hole there. Don't do any bad things with this either. Aren't there cheese insertion tools with that? I was trying to think of something today. 
but I couldn't come up with anything. It's like, this is the easiest way for sure. And you just pray that it lines up with the other side, I suppose. But yes, boning knife or paring knife works the best for this. Because it's a sharp and skinny blade. So that's that one. I think we're good. All right, Anya. Cheeseburger stone fried in the forest. What the heck? <laughs> Sweet dreams on your knees. Thanks for being here as always, man. Hope you have a good day tomorrow. Fiscal. Oh, yeah. Repping that onion. Rinsing off my knife. I don't think I'll need it anymore. And I'm just going to wash my hands because I don't want to contaminate the cheese wrapper. No porky bits. <laughs> oh, Matt. <laughs> Terrifying. Cheese insertion tool. Smells so good. Bloob goat cheese. It's a thing. It's a thing. How much was this cheese? I think it comes in two packs. And honestly, I don't remember how much it was. Maybe two packs for like $12 or something. And I'm just thinking about how I want to do this. I might just cut it in half and put it on the board and then cut it into like small pieces that are like long. I don't know. We're going to roll with it. We have time today. We're fooling around. But you guys can see how there's not blueberries everywhere. So it's not super sweet. I think I'll cut this into like four pieces. That will we'll get like lengths of it. Maybe I can just stuff it right into the pork. Let's hope. I'm sure you could also freeze the cheese after you cut it and that way it won't fall apart. Steve says, hi, Sammy. Oh. <laughs> Staying hydrated. Really, Opteryx? I mean, like I said, I've put this cheese on like crostini toast before and it was really, really good with basil and stuffs. Okay, let's see. Let's see how this is going to work. <laughs> Terrifying. But she's in. I'm sorry, pork. You don't deserve this. Oh, you're not even a fan of like fruit and cheese. That makes sense then. Ha <laughs> 
try and keep the bad thoughts away right now. But I think we we're able to like squish it through. <laughs> ah. Twitch, don't ban me. I'm just stuffing meat. Is this ban worthy? We will find out. You guys make it worse when you say stuff like that. <laughs> I can't do it. Just pause the stream, finish stuffing the meat, and then I'll come back. You should, Mia. You should. Just cover your eyes if you can't handle it. I suppose I could use a utensil <laughs> to try and make it better. Stuff squid with ricotta cheese. That sounds good. If only like gravity could just pull the cheese through. Yeah, a utensil, Mia. Like the end of a spatula or something. I don't know. I don't know these things. Even worse with a utensil? It's true. It probably would be worse. I'm just trying to make sure that it's all the way in the middle. I think it is, though. Just give it like a little... Rolly roll. Okay, on to the next one. It's looking fat compared to this one. Hello, butt. Right on time. <laughs> oh my god, Mia, you felt sick. Yet you're still here. That makes me so happy. Hey Kev, how's it going? Something's going on outside. You can't handle canned salmon. I don't like canned salmon either. It's weird. Oh, nice. Nice, Kev. Dad crushing the lamb. I like it. How did he make it? I hear what's going on out there. Did you not test the water temp? No. Did he burn his mouth? No. It wasn't that hot. Okay. I just went. I smelled one of the water the wrong way. Oh, nice Yahtzee. Jambalaya on stream. I haven't done that. Uh, I'm pretty sure I haven't done jambalaya. Yeah. I've done jambalaya? No. Or did your mom do it one day then? Sammy says yes, but I'm saying no. No, your mom did it. Betty did it. Okay. Okay, this other, other side. We need more cheese. Yay, Opterix. Of course I don't mind. That's amazing. You're playing the piano at the ceremony tomorrow? I don't have much musical skill at all. So to me, that is so, so cool. Rando took all of the musical abilities. Okay, we're gonna just use up all this cheese inside. So we're just gonna keep stuffing. All of the cheese. All of the cheese. It's terrifying. All of the cheese. 
So Sammy likes to sing. Whoa, Claft is here. I didn't think he was going to make it. This side feels more firm. He smoked the lamb. That sounds so good. Yeah, that was hilarious, but like the raid literally went on and you're like, I'm back. I was like, no, not but. She got left behind. <laughs> Welcome in the most clout person on Twitch. I've been clapped. Welcome, welcome. So is the grounding done then? Or you still are like being punished for those terrible words that you said? Squeeze the cheese. <laughs> but I love you. I love you, but. Yahtzee's doing dabs. I don't mind that either. Yeah, blazing out before sushi. That was what we did all the time in Vancouver. Order it in. Blaze it up. Wait for it to arrive. Good to go. Eating mass amounts of sushi. Commence. Okay, we're done. This mess is done. That's it. I quit. Terrifying experience. It was so bad that Omad even left. Do I like superheroes? If so, who's my fave? Ah, that's a hard question. I mean, I love Iron Man. Like, how can you not choose Wonder Woman if you're a girl? Just gonna wrap up this cheese and put it back into the fridge. And then we'll season up this pork. You're still here, Omat. <laughs> Oh, this wrapped in bacon with the blueberry and goat cheese? That would be unreal, rough. Unreal. 12 years, Gimp, it's been? Oh, shit. I just realized there's like blueberries all over the floor. It got real. Blueberry sabotage. Good thing I have black socks on. Yes, thank you, Trist. I am done stuffing the meat. We can now commence the rest of the stream. Back to PG. And I think I'm just going to oil this up a little bit. With what? I guess I'll choose olive oil. Something with a bit more flavor. Gal Gadot is a more legit question. I'm not all up on my superheroes. I am my own superhero. Okay, we got that drizz. We're drizzling. Now we're just gonna roll that around. I'm just gonna do simple salt and pepper. We have enough flavors going on here right now. Let's not make it confusing. Exactly, Epic Itch. Like, where was the doggo vacuum when I needed her? <laughs> I was gonna use this really small rack because I'm using the bigger one for the confit right now. But I can quickly run upstairs and grab Betty's. 
big one and that way we can bake this really nice so i'll be right back like two seconds you know what that's a good one i love deadpool too i'm excited for the new movie that is so funny that you said venom kev because that's sammy's favorite here we're just gonna do two small ones like that good to go what did i miss What is going on, Mies? <laughs> yeah, I'm losing IQ. What is going on? Okay, let's do some rolling. Oiling up the meat. For the roast. The roasty toast and that will help the salt and pepper to stick as well so those look pretty good it's good that they're both very similar in size because that means they'll cook very evenly Guy came in cussing about the food. Why? I wasn't even here. Will the oil crisp it up? It'll help a bit. Good question, Steve. Heavy dose of some pepper. Not sure if I want to tie the ends or not to maybe help the cheese from coming out. I don't know. What should I do, guys? That would be a shame. Don't forget the lemon pepper. I don't know where Betty even stashed it. I don't have it downstairs. Betty's keeping it forever. Just 
going to give these a flip and then I'll just salt the other side. I'm not going to put any more pepper on. Ketchup on everything. You're one of those weirdos. I don't eat much ketchup anymore unless it's on fries. But I typically don't eat it with steak or anything like that. Maybe because my cooking's so good. Okay. Those are looking fab. Now we're going to put them onto our sheet pan. And having them on the racks is also going to help it cook more evenly because the air can circulate underneath. would be good but I don't want to do too many herbs because I'm doing dill in the carrots later and then the thyme will probably go into the sauce what rook thanks man cooking is good okay Two months already. Thank you for the resub. Woohoo! Thank you, thank you, Ruff, for the support. That means a lot to me, man. Have I ever cooked anything weird like cow tongue or intestine? Never really intestine, good, like okay. other than making sausages with it in school and then cow tongue have not done much with it. We did it at the taqueria a bit where we did tacos, but I wasn't super hands-on with that stuff at that point. I'm not opposed to cow tongue though. It's, it's quite nice texturally wise if it's cooked right. Opteryx is back from his piano practice. Put rosemary, I won't, won't regret it. If you say so. I could also put a sprig of rosemary in the pan while I sear them up before they go in the oven. So why don't we do that instead? I don't know. We'll see. I'm kind of torn just because rosemary is so strong. We have about half an hour left on our potato pave. What are we at? Four o'clock. We're doing pretty good, guys. Mr. Beaven, hello, welcome in. I do not like liver at all. Not for me, sadly. Best taste in me ever. I can't do the iron taste, sadly. Okay, that pork can just sit out for now. It will be okay. I would not let any meat sit out at room temp for more than two hours, guys. So I'll be baking this probably around 5.15ish. So we'll be okay. That's about an hour from now. Elvin, you put up a photo on Discord, yes. I've never done paella stream either, but luckily with my cast iron pans, I think I'd be able to. I'm going to check your photo, Elvin. What? That looks so good. So, so good. Pâtés are okay. I mean, I would eat foie 100%. So it doesn't taste too much like liver and typically there's other flavors when you eat foie. 
Let us get into our carrot and kale prep, guys. Got to peel up some carrots. Chop up some kales. We're chilling. You hate squash, Trist. I know you said that yesterday. That's so weird. Squash is so nice and sweet. No problem, Elvin. Like, don't waste all of your time doing this stuff for us. If you have other stuff to do. Don't you even fret. Just looking at all the things that I want to use today. Still getting used to using all my equipment again. So I have five large carrots. Yeah, exactly, Rook. Squash is like a go-to over here as well. Zucchini is more mushy though. So if you cook it wrong, then yeah, it's not super appetizing. That one makes sense. I understand that one when people say they don't like it. Gave your dog a carrot. I'm sure she loves you for that. I'm gonna give Posh all the ends of these. She's outside, so sh her snifter does not know that there's carrots being prepped in here right now. You're weird about pickles, Rook? The heck? Actually, that's funny you say that. The, my friend that made all of my like overlays and artwork, he's weird about pickles too. Doggo snacks, commence. Gonna go see if she's out there. Mushrooms are a weird texture as well though. Hubbard squash. I've never had that one. I'm sure if you showed me it though, I would know what it is. Yeah, rainbow carrots. That's what we're planting in the garden, always. And that's how carrots are supposed to be. People drink pickle juice, especially when they're hungover. I am not one of those people. Epic. What? You're weird about bananas and fruit? I am weird about bananas too. That's why I only eat them in smoothies, usually. I will suck it up sometimes though, 
if I can't make a smoothie and I'll still eat the banana only because I know it's good for me. <laughs> Barbecue chicken pizza, Steve. That sounds delicious. Oh, nice Opteryx. That would probably be really good. Is the sauce more like green? Yes, Omat. How are you still here, by the way? Originally, carrots were purple. And then they mutated most of them so that they're orange because they freaked people out. So weird. <laughs> Rook, best pro tip ever. That's so crazy, guys, that you don't like fruit. Fruit is amazing. Okay, last one. She's crazy. Kranikazi, thanks for the follow, welcome. It goes gray, Opteryx, that's so weird. Okay, for our carrots today, I think I'm just going to cut them on the bias. Something like that. I think that will look really nice on the plate. And obviously if it's thin like this, we're not gonna cut it down any further. Jim's still in here? Oh shit. Stuff's flying. Ooh, dehydrated pineapple. That is delicious. So are banana chips though. Like dehydrated banana is really good. Tastes like vanilla. All right, but thanks for popping in. Have a wonderful night and see you tomorrow. I'm gonna be honest here. I am not a fan of Cardi B. She sounds like a cheap version of Nicki Minaj, and I'm not having any of it. That's a great way to do it, Steve. As long as you try something once. And if you don't like it after that, well then, at least you know. I can't stand people that are like, I, I dislike this food. And then you ask them, have you ever had it? And they're like, no. It's like, this doesn't even make sense. How can you not like it if you've never tasted it? Cardi B, don't even like waste your time, Opteryx. She is a new artist. What, Rook? It should be no problem to make jerky in the dehydrator. Don't be scared, like you won't get sick. As long as you dry out the beef completely, you're fine. Okay, there's all of our carrots. It's definitely enough. At least I think so. We'll see how much veg we end up with after I do the kale. This is my amazing little bunch of kale. I think this is red Russian. Just listen to Moneybag. 
It's just something about her voice. It's true, Omad. It is getting late for you. You go get some rest, my dude. And we'll maybe catch you tomorrow. Yeah, this is called Red Russian. Super good. Okay, I'm just going to wash these up. And then we'll start processing. Yay, oh Matt, you're back tomorrow and Friday. Okay, stay thick, my friend. watch this guys Sit. I like shook the wet kale on top of her she's so upset she's like why are you doing this to me Cardi B's face is frozen in this surprise look it's so true I know like what has she done what happened okay so we're gonna zip this which means we're just gonna take it off of the tough stem like that. Kind of like taking herbs off the stem. Oh my God, Elvin. <laughs> Are you from Canada? I am. It looks like a weed. Well, it's not. It's still one of the top superfoods in the world. So I don't think kale is going to go anywhere anytime soon. Bite it. You got to bite it off. Good girl. We're having kale snacks. Maybe I can't touch the scale. Why, you want a scale? Yeah, I just want to weigh this. <laughs> She's like, I'm gone. What do you want? This sweet. Grams? <laughs> Sam's weighing wood. Your tea arrived, Opterix. What kind of teas did you order? Okay, posh one outside, good to go. So these bigger leaves, we're just gonna lay out flat, stack them, and then we're just gonna chop it nice and fine. Pharaoh, your dog would bite you. Yeah, she only eats the stem part of the kale. She just likes the crunchy stuff. If I gave her the leaf, she would totally spit it out and be like, what are you doing? She'd get upset. So just rough chopping it. It's okay if we end up with like little stringy kind of pieces. I'm good with that. I kind of have an idea of how I want to plate this. Yunnan Golden Tips Organic from China. Black tea. Nice. Where did you order all these teas from? Jasmine Dragon Phoenix Pearl. Those are some crazy names. OK, 
Okay, kale is processed. I think I'm gonna grab one more carrot for us to process. And then let's start filling our pot for blanching. And we'll start doing that. So hot water and some salt in it. How much salt, guys? Uh, about a tablespoon or more. It's like salting pasta water. Upton Tea, a really good tea store. Nice, I'll have to look that up. Once I finish all of my other teas, that is. Got a pretty good stash going. Okay, this is going to go on high heat for now to bring it up to a boil, like medium high, something around there. And I'm just gonna go grab that carrot. Hey, Ashley, how are you? Welcome in. Sunshine came back out. I'm excited. You actually don't have a rain hood at all, Optrix? That's insane to me. Doesn't your house like fill up with smoke? Because typically islands still have range hoods that like pop out of them, I guess. <laughs> yes, armored. That's still one of my favorite emotes. It sometimes fills up. Well, that's impressive then. Oh, nice. It's a big kitchen. Well, then you got nothing to worry about. Just open some windows. You're good. Has anyone popped into Death's stream lately to see how it's going for him? Okay, that is done. Done, 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 done. Gonna put all this in a bowl. Yeah, Death just started his first stream back today, Steve. Go check him out. He's helped me out a lot for my stream, so go show him some love. Pharaoh, no question is a dumb question. But yes, I am a professional chef. I graduated from culinary school over seven years ago now. And I've been cooking ever since. And just this year, I actually got out of the restaurants and started streaming instead to see how it goes. There's our lovely veg, nice and colorful. Exactly, Gim. That's so brilliant. Yeah, shut up, smoke detector. I'm cooking. You should know this. And it would just be like, oh, okay. Guess I'm not needed then. 
Okay, six minutes left on our pave, and then we'll check it out. You got your munch pack. What's that, Trist? Gimp, I've worked at, I think, eight different restaurants in the last seven years, so I've done a lot of different stuff. Some of them were smaller, some of them were bigger. Some was like catering. But the last restaurant that I worked at was in Vancouver and it was a brew pub. So the menu was like, it had quite a bit of stuff, like a lot of deep fried snacks and stuff like that. And then we had a pizza oven, which was awesome. So we did like forno pizzas which was my favorite thing to do. Like I could sling pizzas all day. I would say there was probably 40 items on the menu. So that's pretty big. If I ever had my own spot, I probably wouldn't have more than like 20. Just because having that many things on the menu takes away from you being able to do everything perfectly. Like you're always rushing to get everything done. Oh, empanadas as an appetizer. That would be amazing with beer. Like, amazing. No way, Trist. I love that you get that. That is awesome. Okay, we have a couple minutes to chill before the pave comes out, and then we'll check it. See if it needs to stay in there a little bit longer or else it's going to go cool. And then we'll go over the duck confit stuff for tomorrow. Since I already did that up earlier today. Just so you guys can kind of understand how it's done. Death! What's up? I just sent some peeps your way. I don't know if they came in or not. Are you done your stream, man? Or are you just taking a little break? Yeah, exactly. Speak of the devil. <laughs> I love that you popped in here. We were saying all bad things. Very bad things. Oh no, he's still going. He's still going. Go give death a follow. I'm gonna post this for you guys. Today has been an interesting stream, yep. What is that, bacon? That looks so good. Cannabis muffins is where it's at. All right, oven. We're not waiting for you anymore. Come to me, Pave. Pave Maria. I hear some sizzles. Definitely a heavy little pan. So we need to be able to pierce a knife or a fork all the way through this. I'm thinking it's not quite done yet. Extinction! I just saw you're in here. Yeah, we're still a little bit crunchy. So let's go maybe 20 more minutes. But you can see how there's no color on the potatoes. That's what we want. We want them to just kind of steam. 
because we're going to fry them up later on. So back in with those guys, and then I'll just quickly run and grab the duck confit so we can take a look at it. I know, what is going on, Extinction? Death with the skills. Skills that kills. It's already four twenty. Oh my god, why is she barking? <laughs> hey! What is going on? Oh my goodness. Holy. <laughs> Betty's home. Dog's excited. What's up, Shadow? One hour and 54 minutes already. How is the day, Extinction? Okay, here is our duck legs. I just seasoned them up this morning or afternoon, I guess. I think it was around 10 or 11. So I just did a mix. Holy water. Hey kitties. I just did a mix of salt, pepper, and thyme. That's it. Then I just flipped the duck skin side down into that mix, made sure that all of the skin was pretty much covered. And then this is going to sit out in the fridge, uncovered, until tomorrow morning. And then it has to sous vide for 12 hours, which is an insane amount of time. But I know the texture is going to be amazing. I know I love Death's hair. He reminds me of my brother. Clapped, do it up, send photos, post it in Discord. So that is it for the confit. Like I said, it's pretty simple process wise, but it does take a lot of time to prep. So we'll see it tomorrow. You guys will see it come out of the bag tomorrow after it's cooked all day. And then we'll fry it up. Should be amazing. And these are some pretty big duck legs. These were about 300 to 400 grams each. And the smallest one was, I think, around $6. And the bigger ones were around 8 So actually pretty good in price. I'm going to go put these back. to your ears all I did was put the duck back <laughs> what happens when I'm not around not my fault she is crazy about her food it's serious stuff now you know okay so water is ready for blanching which is good now we just need to make our ice bath so I'm gonna go grab some ice from upstairs, your ears are bleeding. I'm sorry, I'm sorry guys. I'm gonna go grab some ice and then I'll pour some cold water in and then we'll get to blanching our veg.
I am here. We got the ice. What? You got some Canadian candy? What is it? Yeah, we can't stay mad at Doggo. Steve dropped the pizza. <laughs> what? Why is there bean water in your steak? That sentence is terrifying. Yeah, we be icy. gonna be sitting right beside our pot there so we can dump the veg right into the ice water once it's cooked honey stinger organic strawberry waffle what that's heck Never even heard of it before, Trist. I am intrigued. Okay, let's get some veg into here. I'm gonna start with the carrots. They'll probably take about five minutes. the walk and then we're gonna use our spider to take the stuff out of the pot and that way we don't have to strain the hot water out because we're gonna use it for the kale as well we're doing stuff I need to look up this waffle It's like a Stroop waffle, kind of. An energy chew. Let me know how it is. Okay. I think we'll make our sauce in this little guy later. So I'll bring that out. So I'm just gonna straight bake the pork in the oven. We're gonna crank it up to 500 and it should only take about 15 minutes to roast it to medium. Oh no, Rook, yeah, that's the worst. I know this one spot that we always walk at over here too at the beach is people would like to take their dogs off the leash, but there's been quite a few attacks lately, which is scary. Like the innocent dogs don't deserve that at all. It's not fair. And it's all the owner's fault. Brum Brum, she angry. She's upset. And then we'll use this big guy for the veg glaze later. And then we're using like all of the pots and pans. This will be for our potato pave. So Thomas Keller said use a cast iron. So we're gonna use a cast iron. Okay, we 
carrots, a little stir. Beat the drums. Making some beats here. Okay, let's go into a little bit of goat cheese, fun facts. I look buff. I actually haven't worked out in like a couple months, but thank you. That means I'm holding my muscle well. Thanks, Gimp. Thanks for the 50 biddies, man. Much appreciated. Feeling the love. Okay, let's get into some goat cheese. So cow's milk and goat's milk have similar overall fat contents. However, the higher proportion of medium chain fatty acids in the goat's milk contributes to the characteristic tart flavor of the cheese. So all of those medium chain fatty acids, which are good for you, that's good. It's not a bad thing. Yes, Opterix. Yeah, goat cheese and goat milk is like underrated for sure. And goat cheese has been made for thousands of years and was probably one of the earliest made dairy products. In the most simple form, goat cheese is made by allowing raw milk to naturally curdle and then draining and pressing the curds. Other techniques use an acid. You can use vinegar or lemon juice, so simple ones, or something a little bit more difficult to find, which is rennet, which is actually a cow's stomach acid, which can help coagulate the milk. The soft goat cheeses are made in kitchens all over the world with cooks hanging bundles of cheesecloth filled with curds in the warm kitchen for several days to drain and cure. Yeah, Rook, get that number one spot. There's two days left. If the cheese is to be aged, it is often brined, so it will form a rind on the outside, so a hard outer layer. And then it will be stored in a cool cheese cave for several months to cure. Goat cheese softens when exposed to heat, although it does not melt in the same way as cow cheeses do. That's a fact. So firmer goat cheeses with rinds are sometimes baked in an oven to create a softer, more viscous texture. I like it. So hopefully our cheese will get melty, but it won't just like ooze out of the pork tenderloin. That's what I'm looking for here. Rennet Stimpy. I like it. Brum Brum, thanks for the follow. Welcome in. Our carrots are boiling, so I'm guessing they're close to being done. I'm gonna taste one of the big ones. So the carrot here, it should be tender, but still have a little bit of bite. So we're cooking it to al dente. Perfect. Into the ice water to stop it from cooking. We don't want mushy carrots. Yum. Even the carrot just like this is so sweet. <laughs> brum brum, watch out. Finna knock you right out, man. Okay, water's still going. So we just have to dunk in our kale for like a minute. And then we'll take it out. Just a quick little blanch. It 
should go nice bright green as well. Looking real good. Never piss off a lady that's good with a knife. I know. Like, Sammy gave me this knife and he kind of like questioned it. He's like, should I really give you this knife? Because <laughs> if things ever go wrong, <laughs> what are you going to do? Kale's coming out into the ice water as well. Nice colorful veg today. And the pot can come off. I'm gonna do a little reorganization of my sink. And we can empty that pot into it. Yeah, that means he's committed. He can't fudge it up. <laughs> pretty much, guys. That's pretty much what happened. Now, we were already together for like a year, I think, when he gave me that. He already knew at that point that we'll be okay. Stuff. That's what they do in yellow knife. <laughs> so bad. Okay, so we can prep our sauce ingredients now. So we need our white wine, which is just out over there. I'm okay with that. Two sprays of thyme. I think I have a little bit more than two but I just picked those earlier today from the garden. Oh, I'm sure he'll put a ring on it soon. I mean, there's no rush. We both know we're not going anywhere. That's my guy. Half a lemon juice, and then we need cold butter, which that can stay in the fridge until we need it. And then a quarter cup of blueberries, which I'm using frozen ones, so I suppose I could take those out now so they can thaw a little bit. Let's take out our bloopers. Literally eat blueberries every day. It's like one of the main fruits in our smoothies. Other than bananas. Bananas. Okay, those are gonna thaw. They are really good for you. Yeah, these are all of my antioxidants. So I stay healthy. Two minutes left on the pave, and then it should be going into the freezer to cool off. Hey, luckily I had a little bit of lemon from yesterday left over. So we can put that over there as well. And the thyme, I'm not going to chop it up. I think I'm just going to put it into the sauce whole. And then we won't have little specks of thyme throughout. Just be nice and silky.
Okay, that is that. That was super easy. And then getting the glaze ready. So honey garlic glaze. We need some butter. So I can start that in the pan, I think. Or at least put the ingredients in. Three tablespoons of butter and two cloves of garlic is going to get fried together. much butter that much butter yeah I can smell the potatoes now so that's typically when you know they're almost ready Okay, let's check these now. They should be good. What are the two seasons in Canada? Winter and July. That's pretty accurate. At least for the prairies. Yeah, hockey and curling season. <laughs> Oh man, potatoey goodness. Oh yeah. Pure heaven. So now we're gonna keep this wrapped with the parchment and we just need to find something to weigh this down. And I think I found the right stuff. <laughs> Jars of nuts. So we'll put our foil kind of back over top just to protect it. And we'll use this to press it down. I think that's going to work well. Keyword, I think. Oh, nice, Tris. Okay, I'll check it out. The world's biggest hoser. So this is going to go into the freezer now if you guys have space. And that way it'll cool off quicker. You don't have too much time to mess around with this anymore. And we'll check it in a little bit. I know hoser isn't used too much anymore. I like the word. Clapped. I just saw your food. It looks good. Tristan, did you eat the waffle already? You dug into it? Okay, back to our glaze. So two tablespoons of honey. I'll just put the honey jar over by the stove. Put it over there. And then a couple cloves of garlic. Probably do like three small ones. 
You ate half of the waffle. Was it good? I just tried to peel garlic without smashing it. Like this little thing, not happening. It's just so much easier. Yeah, Kate smash every time. Every dang time. Nice, Tris. That sounds really good. Taste to taste. Oh, we can chop our dill up right now for the sauce. Or for the carrots. And we'll just put it in a small bowl. I suppose our oven can go off now. Let's set a timer for... 30 minutes for our potato pave. We'll check it at that point. Got a couple bags of dill here. Getting dilly. This one is not looking so hot though. The two bowl trick. What's the two bowl trick? This still is amazing looking though. Like that's a lot. Looks like this stuff's already going bad too. What are they trying to pull here? I'm gonna clean it up so it doesn't disease the other dill. Smoke two bowls and then peel the garlic. <laughs> then it would really take a long time. Okay, we're at 450. I think we're doing good still. Okay, you just shake it up. I'm sure that works good as well. There's also this little like plastic tube that you put the garlic into and then you like roll it on the counter. I've never used that one though. Witchy, welcome in. Thanks for the follow. Opterix, your dad has that one. Does it work well? I've always been intrigued. Ooh, thanks, Witchy. Yeah, I should start to do that with my herbs kind of keep them growing almost in the fridge. Okay, now we're gonna do a nice fine chop. It works well, but yeah, it's not any faster than smashing it and then peeling it. I like the smash method. It takes a little bit to get used to and like to know your knife is not gonna slip out, but 
Once you're comfortable, it works really well. I love how there's now just a demo for everything on YouTube. Greatest thing. It's like, I want to know how to do this. Let's YouTube it. Like, what did we do before YouTube? I murdered a tree. Yep. Arrest me. Okay, dill is done. You have a viral video offerings? What? Okay. Let's get into our veg. So we're just going to take it out of the water here. And we'll put it back into the blue bowl. Opterix, whisper it to me and then I'll post it. Or whisper to Tristan. Or even Rook. And then we'll post the video. That's so cool. And I don't want this stuff too wet, so I might just put a tea towel in the bottom of the blue bowl to kind of soak up any water that's still left on it. used all my tea towels yesterday. Actually, no, I didn't. Good old kitchen towel. <laughs> yeah, Steve, we need to know. You can't just string us along like that. It's a must. It's a prank video, yes. I'm into it. On your class? That's even better. Obviously try not to get any ice cubes in here either. Yes, Opterix, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm sure that student freaked out. This water is so cold. This is a mason bee. That's what goes into your home. What? They're so cute. Yeah. Where was it? Oh. Sammy the beekeeper. How'd she go? No, go with Sammy. Go, go. Yeah, just whisper the link. us a little whisper and then we'll post it to you. I think I might take that off. Like, I don't like the blocked links thing. I know we all like to post a lot of links. It's just we all have to be smart enough to not click the ones that the weird people post. That's how I feel about that.
Okay, let's try a carrot again. Mm-hmm. Still perfect. We're good. There is a way. Yeah, I just have to go further into the settings. Okay, we are at 5 o'clock. Pretty much everything is ready to go now except the pave. The pork will probably cook around 5.20. Maybe 5.30-ish. And that way it'll come out at 5.45. We'll let it rest and finish up the sauce at that time. Oh, it was Halloween. This is amazing. Okay, I'm totally watching this right now. Watch the link together, guys. <laughs> she leaves the room. Hilarious. <laughs> I like your style. The spider followed her and the like thread got kind of attached to her. That's epic. There is a setting like that. Trist, thanks for looking it up. I'm going to check on Death again. See if his muffins are out. Maybe one of the bots? Ah, maybe on stream elements. We'll see. Hey, chillin' like villains. We have about 15 minutes left on our pave to cool down. I should be able to slice it up. If anything, we'll slice it and then put it back into the freezer just so it can cool off quicker. That way there's more surface area to cool it down. You click something bad on his name, what? kind of craziness is going on right now. Okay, let's do this. Let's get our setup. Saucepan. This is the pave pan. We'll put some oil in here for right now while we're waiting. No trist.
It, it's no big deal. No worries. We're keeping it cool. So obviously we do need enough oil in the pan so that the potato doesn't sit because that would be such a shame. Would be sad indeed. Rook, thanks for the biddies, man. Thank you, thank you. Holding the lead. Peter, you have to make Misaka for a colleague, but you're scared of doing it. Do I have any advice? Here, I have a really good recipe that I've done before. It's pretty involved, but the flavor is amazing. And I would say just follow this recipe and you won't have any problems. Just give yourself enough time to make it so that you don't end up rushing. Rushing is never a good thing. And Musaka, it's not actually that hard. You just need to pay attention to making all of your layers properly. And the recipe that I posted, they actually put sliced potatoes on the bottom and I found that soaked up a lot of the liquid that would come out of the eggplant and the zucchini. Ooh, Opteryx, how, how the bacon salt would go with the potatoes. I like it. Maybe we'll finish with that later on after it's fried up. What's up, Trist? No way, Peter. That's so cool. You know who that is? I have no idea who that was, but the recipe was really good. Okay, let's get the bacon salt out for future reference. It's all Greek to me. Mm, I love Greek food. There's still souvlaki leftovers from when Betty made it on Sunday. Probably eat that tomorrow. Could I make fudge? Nice request. Maple fudge, Trist. Keep it very Canadian. Capita. I haven't had that in a while. Too many good things here. Okay, maple fudge. I'll write it down for you. My man. I keep all these notes now. Got you guys. <laughs> Tris, you've also asked for whoopie pies. You have good requests, though. And I like how it's usually just dessert. Definitely can tell that you have a sweet tooth. Yeah, don't fudge it up. what I always say when I try not to swear. Oh, fudge. So now I want fudge. And I know it's not very hard to make. I got the yawns, guys. Mother Trucker. That's a good one, too. Okay, 
what the pie should be next. I can probably make them next week. And I'm pretty excited for Mia's Baked Alaska that we're going to finish tomorrow. I can't believe it's just been chilling in the freezer since Monday. Maybe we should like sneakily check it out right now. The whoopie pies, I don't think they're very expensive to make. Let me look up a recipe and kind of food cost it out. Which recipe should we choose? 3.5 out of 4 with 187 reviews or 4.3 out of 5 with 100 reviews? Which one do we think is better? I think this 3.5 one. Check it. They look pretty good. It's been online since 2003. Oh, and I do have Dutch cocoa powder, so that's a good thing. This jar right here, full to the brim of the good stuff. <laughs> Put a whoopee cushion under. I wish. I can't lift up the seat cushion though without breaking it. So it makes eight whoopee pies. I like that. That way we can have two each. Flour, cocoa powder, baking soda, salt, buttermilk. So buttermilk will be the more expensive thing here as well as the butter. So dairy is always very expensive in baking. Everything else is quite cheap. Hey, Vium, how are you? <clears throat> Did you stream today? And then the filling is butter as well. Mixed with icing sugar and marshmallow fluff. The fluffs and then just some vanilla. This seems pretty easy, Trist. I'm excited. This is something I've always wanted to make. Viewn, thank you. Thank you for that compliment. I cook some crazy stuff. I like to stay very creative with my flavors. Yeah, Trist, $10, more than enough. More than enough. It was a fun stream, Viewn, that's good. You're feeling like you're kind of settling into things. It seems like your confidence is going up, which is good. That will happen over time. Yeah, viewing streams. Viewn just started streaming, what, a couple weeks ago now, I think? I don't know. Time goes by so fast, it's hard to keep track. Okay, we're going to preheat our oven pretty soon here and get things going. About five minutes left on our pave until we check it, and hopefully we can cut it up. Amazing view. Yeah, Allison makes a lot of like Asian dishes, but it's awesome that she does that because she makes a lot of things that I've never eaten either, and it's good to see how it's made and what goes in it. Kay Farrell. Yeah, I still have it up on my browser, so don't worry, I will watch it. And thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day. Cream puffs are my favorite, Opterix. 
seriously, I'm really good at making profiteroles. That could be a good one as well. And then I really like the savory kinds of profiteroles as well. Where we did one in one of the restaurants, we did wild mushrooms with truffle cream. It was so good. And like fresh herbs sprinkled on top and then you just like close it up and shove the whole thing in your mouth. Yeah, savory. It was like a canapé or an appetizer. Steve, get into streaming. Could be your big break. Hi, Rush. How is it? How have your streams been as well? All of the streamers are here. It is amazing. I'm going to go check back up on death. I want to see these muffins that he makes. What's he getting into? <laughs> You're doing good, Rush. That's good to hear. And so far, no babe yet. Still wait until Friday. <laughs> it's so soon. Opteryx, are your favorite cream puffs just like the vanilla cream ones? Or do you go like a little bit fancier with them? Check in the pave. It still feels a little bit warm, but we'll be okay. We'll still be able to cut it. Like I said, the original recipe says it takes like eight hours to make. I'm just gonna press this down. Make sure it's one nice even layer. Ooh, amaretto. You want to see Mia's Baked Alaska? It's due tomorrow and it's going to be late. It's making you wait for it. Okay, let's see a sneak peek. Mia's, where are you? This is the Baked Alaska. I'm sure we can flip it out of this right now. <laughs> and by I'm sure, maybe I'm not. Probably have to torch the bowl a bit. She'd be frozen up. Yep, but this is it. So it looks exactly the same as we left it. I know I need a lead weight. We'll have to wait until tomorrow. Yes, Rook. Congrats, dude. 
It's always a good feeling. Oh, I just saw Death's Muffins. Okay, we're going in. So you can see how it's flattened down really nice. Everything's all compacted. It smells really good, salt and peppery. We got a mouse on the counter. Watch out, it's gonna run away. Okay, going in with the slices. So I think I'll probably do five, five portions. See if I can measure it out. Perfect. Some of them are bigger than others, but I'm okay with that. We have guy portions and girl portions. <laughs> To this pan. Probably gonna put parchment in the bottom of there as well. I don't want it to stick so it'll be hard to get off the bottom. Do you want the big in? The big in. Oh, no rush. It looks really good. Death stuff is looking awesome. It's not his yet. Sorry, Sammy. That's actually Steve's portion of potato. So we're just going to put that and hopefully over top. Boom. Look at that setup. Ready for the flip? It could be terrifying, but you never know unless you do it. 1200 for some reason. Do you want me to say something, Rush, or ask him? Ready? One, two, three. Guys, it didn't come out. <laughs> oh, there we go. It dropped. Oh. Yeah, it's still a little warm, but it's holding together. So that's all that matters. Mm. Like 
perfectly salted. Let's start soaking that pan. And I'm going to turn the oven on for our pork. Things are going to be coming together together pretty quickly now. Okay, sounds good, Rush, as long as he knows. You don't know nothing? Nope. Sammy knows nothing. Nothing. Okay, there's our little close up. I'm gonna try and spread these out a bit. with my palette knife. So that's another thing that Thomas Keller said is a must for this. That way just the air can get in between and they'll cool off a little bit faster. But I think they'll fry up just fine. I'm not scared. That looks amazing though. Tastes good guys. <laughs> Potato snack, thank you. Sammy knows nothing. I don't know what they're doing out there. All right, oven. I don't know if this silk hat will be okay at that heat, so I'm just gonna take it off. It's a little high, I don't want it to melt. That would be really sad. Bake. We're going all the way up. Started. <laughs> Ruck. I've never, well, I've never made pave like this before. Usually it's just like kind of scallop potatoes. I did beets pave once and it was a pain in the butt. Thanks for the bits, man. And <laughs> just keep topping me up. What, Opterix is doing laundry today too. That's what I have to do after stream is go fold all of mine. Okay, well that is chilling. I'm gonna go take the last bathroom break before all this craziness starts. The real cooking will begin. And just so we know, the potatoes aren't too salty, so we can definitely garnish with some bacon salt. Kind of bring all of the porky goodness together.
Okie dokes. Helicopter. You're still here. No, I won't make Sammy fold it. That's our deal. He gets to go to work all day, so I have to do all the housewife things. Okay, Rash, sounds good. So apparently Wednesdays are laundry days for us. I like it. PB&J sandwich. Yum. No M&M PJs. I think today he's doing Rasta Homer PJs. No problem, Rush. I got you. All right. So I think... We're probably going to start frying up the potato pave because we have to fry it on all of the sides. Make sure it's nice golden brown. I'm not sure how long that's going to take, so we should probably start earlier rather than later. Just so I don't have to fry the pave, make the sauce, glaze the vegetables and everything all at the same time. How's our lighting? Is that good, guys? It's not too crazy. So this pan is nicely coated with a high heat vegetable oil. Let's go like medium heat for now. Medium high-ish. Wow, death's already been going for three and a half hours. And I'm at three. Makes sense. He started half an hour before me. Bacon looks so good though. Holy Rook. Yeah, you're late. What is food tonight though? Before you go, you gotta tell me what's going on. I don't know if the potatoes are gonna splash either. I hope not. We should be able to flip it with the tongs and the palette knife without it falling apart. Crossing fingers. Yeah, time does fly when you have fun. Some of that. that one in the the thing? Nice, simple chicken breast and broccoli. Keeping it healthy. Sounds good, Rook. Get those lean gains. Trish, is it hard to cook in a kitchen standing for like eight plus hours? Not really. I'm sure if I went back into the kitchen now and started doing like eight hour shifts, I would get tired. Just because I haven't done it in so long, like I'm doing half that amount of time. But you do get used to standing. And having really good shoes for the kitchen helps a lot. Because yes, I have like a bad back and hips and all of that fun stuff. So for me to stand for that amount of time is not the best thing, but 
I never got super tired before. I have a lot of energy. I don't know if you guys can tell that, but I can stand and like walk forever, pretty sure. <laughs> Rook. It's so true though, yeah. Save the big stuff for the weekend where you can actually focus on it and not rush. It makes sense. And I guess like working in a kitchen, you're not really standing in one spot the whole time. It's like the lines are pretty long, so you could be like over here grabbing stuff from the fridge, turning around, putting it in pans, going farther down and like going over to the deep fryer and stuff. So it's a lot of running around, like a lot of steps. I think when Sammy and I used to work together in the kitchen, we would do like 20,000 almost a day, insane amount, or sorry, 20 kilometers in a day. Okay, our oil is almost dancing. Oven feels pretty hot. Same time, same place, Rook, have a great night and have a good dinner. Okay, it's 5.34. Pork's gonna go in. I am going to set a 10 minute timer, check it then, just to make sure everything is good. And then it will probably take an additional five minutes from that time, I'm not sure. I've never cooked pork tenderloin at this heat or have had it stuffed with blueberry goat cheese. So let's do this. Middle rack should be good to go. I'm gonna get my splash guard out just in case the potatoes want to spit at me, but we should be okay. I need some wine too. I'll have some tomorrow on Thirsty Thursday. I don't drink too much during the week. I like to keep my sugars pretty low. Breaded and fried smelt. You're not proud of it. Oh, curry sauce. I don't mind fried smelts. I had them in France and they were very good. I loved how crispy they were. Okay, let's check this first one here just to make sure she ain't burning. Looking beautifully golden brown almost. So, I'm gonna make our glaze in this pan. So 
we're gonna start by frying up the garlic cloves in the butter and then we will add in our honey after that and then the dill will go in last you can drink all day unless you start in the morning Garlic press is a must. Oh my God, Death's little doggo standing on her stool. So cute. Okay, let's check this potato. I can hear the sizzles. Yep. Ready for the flip? I don't know if I am. Sorry. We're ready. Holy. I don't know, guys. I don't know. It's hot. It's really hot. That color, though. Yep. Are you guys done? Yep. Smelling the garlic, smelling potatoes frying in butter. Stag's Leap, never heard of that one. Is that my husband? Not husband, partner in crime. Straight marinated. Give our garlic a little stir. I'm gonna just open a window. Let the airs in. Okay, garlic is just turning a nice golden brown. So let's drop our honey in and then we'll kind of make a caramel with that. A couple tablespoons of honey should be lots. Should get all bubbly and happy. So good. Scorpy, thanks for the follow and welcome in. That's not very nice to say, Brown Brown. And then that can just get turned off for now. We don't want to burn the garlic. We just want to get it all roasty. We can move it to the back as well. Pretty much done there as well. I think I'm gonna flip it back over to the other side. Because the second side crisps up a lot nicer. And I took those off of the heat. Like, look at that. Little piece of crispy potato. I'm gonna munch on that in a sec. Yep. 
You're welcome, guys. You are welcome. That's going to come off of the heat as well. And I'm just going to put it on the cutting board here. And it should stay really nice and hot. You get those views. Holy. It looks really dark, but it's not. I think it's just the lighting in here. That's happiness. He looks like 10 years older, not even close. How dare you? Okay, I'm turning up the hood fan because it's getting schmucky. Woo! I'm innocent. Okay, well that's going. <laughs> we're gonna start. Oh, we're totally gonna raid death. We are going to. Yes, Trist. He should still be on. This is slices of potato slowly cooked with cream there's probably a good like 50 slices in there and then we sliced it up fried it amazingness so let's get some wine in our pan start reducing that put the blueberries in right now too. That was our timer for the pork. This is going to be insane when I open the oven. So it's searing up in the oven. Let's take a temp. And we'll see if we have to put it back in or if it should just rest. We're gonna temp the inside part. That's what takes the longest to cook. 3D print structures using potato puree. Go <laughs> so right in the center there. We're looking for around 140 Fahrenheit. Hovering around 110. Let's check this one. I feel like it might be even lower. Nope, same, same. Okay. Probably about five more minutes for this, not even. And we'll take it out and let it rest. There is a little bit exploding out on here. I don't know if you guys can see. But so far, so good. Four minutes. And I'm just going to go grab a nice white plate for plating and I'll be right back. These potatoes are still hot, I just had to check.
smoky. And this is why I have a hood vent, Opterix. <laughs> I'm crazy. butter out for that. That has to be really nice and cold. Probably like two to three tablespoons, maybe even more, is what we'll need to make the sauce nice and thick. Yeah, hot potato. Hot potato. Thanks, Rush. Hope you have a wonderful day at work. And maybe catch you tomorrow. Yeah, Rush always goes to work at this time. At least he comes and says hi though first. That's amazing. We'll start with that amount of butter and see how she goes. Let's get our thyme in there as well. The heat will get the flavors out. And it should start to become very fragrant. Mm -hmm. It's looking good, guys. Yeah, love butter. Where's Finster been? Patris? Life is butter. <laughs> we'll let that reduce just a touch more. Then when we finish the sauce, then we'll glaze our veg and then we'll be pretty much ready to plate. I think while the pork is resting, I'm gonna pop the potato back in the oven after it's turned off, just so it can stay warm while we finish up everything. Finster has been in here though? Okay, ready for the smoke. Feels right. So those are gonna come off of the tray and onto the board. What? Solid. How are you? How are you, my man? Guys, Solid is the person that created our doggo and hype emotes. And he actually lives in BC as well. So oven going off, pave will go back in. Sorry, I had to munch that. Just to stay warm while we finish this off. Well, I love how the cutting board is steaming after, after I take that away. There's definitely some cheese in there that wants to come out. Ooh. 
the meat cam. Things are good solid. Staying steady. Into the new kitchen now. Okay, so I took that off the heat because it was just reducing a little too fast. The time can come out. And then, like I said, we're just going to finish with a little bit of lemon juice. Brighten it up. About a teaspoon, I would say. And then we'll start stirring our butter in. So you literally just have to do this. should be nicely balanced as well between like acidity and richness. We'll put it back on the heat just a little bit. You guys can kind of see how the color has changed after we've added the butter too. Good. Now for the rest of our veg. That's a hot pan. Yum. Turn this guy. Back onto medium. I put this cloth in because it is quite wet. Thinking ahead. Yeah, watch out guys, it's hot. Hot, hot, hot. Give that a little tasty taste. I love how deep the color is. That looks so good. Mmm. Just got like a hint of blueberry. Maybe use a touch of salt. It's really nice and rich though. Get a little hint of the lemon juice. I think it's gonna go really good with the like creaminess of the goat cheese.
got really nice and roasted in here. So it's probably going to give a little bit of a nutty flavor. Get back in the pan. I'm just going to cover that. Then we'll bring it up. What kind of wine? Good question. Uh, Hester Creek. Gewürztraminer. Treminer. So it's a little bit more sweet. Oh, it's a blend actually. Gewürztraminer, Treminer, Trebbiano, and Pinot Gris. So our character white defines the unique fruit characteristics of our region. It's both versatile and perfect for sipping. Hints of green apple, peach, herb, and mineral aromas. And they actually say to serve it with like calamari, oysters, scallops, and roasted chicken. But so far, I think it's going to be really nice with the pork. You're not the only one, Steve. There's like 27 other people. Don't worry. This is bubbling. Give it one more stir and then potatoes are coming out and we're going to start to plate. for the slice. Let's do the skinnier one first. How does the wine taste on its own? It's not bad. It's not bad, but I would definitely use it for cooking. Okay, we're going in. Let us pray that it's perfectly done. And so it is. I'm gonna turn the light on. Same as yesterday is. Is this one the better one? I think so. Like this is amazing looking. And then I wanna keep my knife nice and clean while I slice this. I'm just gonna grab paper towel. This is just for the photo. Obviously for everyone else's, it's not gonna matter too much. It's oozing. Did you guys see that? Like perfectly medium. I'm going to do one more smaller slice. Yum. <laughs> I'm sorry, Trist. Yeah, I should put it this way. So you guys can see it. So pave is the first thing going on the plate. I'm gonna use this skinny one. It's gonna be my portion. And I think we're gonna offset it. Our veg is looking amazing. Give that a little tossy toss. Have a taste. Perfectly sweet and like garlicky. I love it. So I'm gonna put the bed of greens down for us to put the pork onto. And I think I'll just put the carrots around.
That's where we're at so far. Now for our porky goodness. If I was to be picky, it's a little bit rare right there. But I think as it rests, it'll come up. where we're at so far. <laughs> Tristan, put you in my will. I love that. Okay, now for our sauce, which I'm just going to spoon around the plate. Start down there. I don't want to pour it over the pork. We worked so hard to create that amazing cook and stuffing on it. I think leaving it over there is going to be good. And then just a little bit of dill on the veg. Nice fresh herbs to finish. Pretty happy with that. I'm just gonna move this out of the way so I can taste. Oh, and take a photo, I suppose. Have I ever cooked crawfish? No. You can cook pork rare. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you can eat pork rare. It's just like your choice like texture wise if you want to eat it that way or not i'm gonna go take a quick photo and then we're gonna munch The stuff I do for the gram. Shiggity, thanks for the follow. Thanks, cookery. Starting with the carrots first. Perfectly cooked, a little bit of crunch still. And like I said, you just get a little hint of garlic and then the sweetness from the honey really complements it. Let's get into this pave. So I'm not sure if you guys actually saw the side view of it, but there is probably a good 50 to 60 layers in this piece of potato. Yay, cookery. I know people were kind of freaked out today when they saw I was making pork with blueberries, but it's so good. Okay, so here's a good angle. All of those amazing thin layers. And it's really hot. Mmm. Tastes like grandma's potatoes that she would make. Like just buttery goodness. Okay, going into this. Little bit of the blueberry goat's cheese. Do a little bit of the sauce. 
It looks like a pretty amazing bite. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I would probably put the bacon salt on this rather than the potato. It's just a little sweet, but I think it complements everything really nice. Death! Don't tell me you're done because we wanted to come and raid you. So I'll just do this with the bacon salt. Just for a little extra contrast, but the pork is so tender. I just like fall apart in my mouth. Amazing. I'm happy with that plate. What a good stream today, guys. Thanks everyone for being here. Thanks, Death. Now we're gonna come and see how you're doing. All right, guys, we're gonna go into Death. Thanks everyone for the new follows. Let's get some social posts here right before we go. Hey, Cubby, thanks for the salt. Feeling the love. Glad you were able to make it again. Hey, get in on our Discord if you guys want any of these recipes. All of this stuff today, except for the pave, was my own. So you can kind of see how creative I am. I love to play around with flavors a lot. And then... I am very active on Instagram as well, so feel free to give me a follow there. Oh, no extinction. <laughs> well, thanks for being here for the last bit. It's the most important part, is seeing the food, even though you can't eat it. Sad. And Rook gave me a bunch of biddies today too, so thanks for that. No new subs though. We'll carry on to another day. So we're gonna go raid death pretty long time viewer of mine who just started his cooking stream today. First stream ever. Trist, thanks for being an awesome mod. It's always good having you in here. So we're going to go in, get your onions ready or whatever you have for emotes. And I hope everyone has a wonderful night. Catch you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Yay, extinction. Yes, it was actually quite easy. And I did it in half the amount of time as what it called for. So keep that in mind. It's able to be done in four hours. Good night, guys. Love.